live in Studio B the day before Halloween. It's Halloween. Look out. Hey, look out. Look out. <laughs> this is my toilet paper, settle, by the way. Settle Don't down, 2020. Can't have it. Good grief. Can't have it. It's mine. I am Spencer Linton alongside own. a disheveled Jerem Jordan. 2020, man. He's a dumpster fire. I'm, tw I'm 2020. <laughs> Joining us now on the Deseret First Credit Union Hotline is former BYU quarterback, former BYU baseball pitcher, and former Major League pitcher, Ryan Hancock. Ryan, it's been forever. Welcome back to the show. How are you? I'm doing great. How are you guys? Fantastic. I'm could... terrible. I'm 2020 for Halloween. I, I, I hate it. <laughs> I'm annoyed at everything. Yeah, there's, there's some truth in that. <laughs> the filter's off for Jerem today, Ryan, so be careful. It's No worries. We couldn't think of a better person to talk to as uh, BYU prepares for a Halloween game against Western Kentucky than the last guy to play for BYU and quarterback them during a Halloween game. And what a game it was, 1992 against Penn State. Ryan, what do you remember about that Halloween win over the Nittany Lions? Man, um, I'd have to say that was probably one of my favorite games I ever played at Cougar Stadium. Not that I played that many, but... Um, definitely memorable um they came in um with the typical hype you would get playing a, a team like penn state um we had we're, we were on a roll at, the, at that time and we were confident that um that we could give them a good contest and it was just a whole lot of fun that game because we dominated from the first snap and um you know what i remember from that game is um just a, a few series in just seeing the kind of change in their eyes uh like i could you could just see that uh that that they were kind of like deer in headlights they were like we weren't expecting this <laughs> and um, it was just fun because we were just rolling on them you were up 27-3 in the second quarter did you feel like the game was over at that point or were you still concerned because this is 14th ranked penn state this is joe paterno this is the uh, yeah. lions um well you know what uh was playing and the way our, our O line was just um, blowing up uh, their D line. Um, uh, no, not worried at all. Uh, you know, I, it, they just, um, you know, they were just struggling big time and, and we were rolling on offense. Um, I, I really felt like we could have run it up. Um, and I think that the reason we didn't is because um, Lavelle's relationship with, <laughs> with Mr. Paterno. Um, so with coach Paterno. So uh, uh, we, we, we really could have r run it up worse than we did. Kalen Hall ran for 117. The team ran for 241. You did throw for three touchdowns. Did you feel like this was a rushing day? Like, okay, the run game was going to win this one. Um, it was really typical of that season. Um, really the run set up the throw. Um, we, uh, you know, with that tandem of Jamal and, and Kalen, um, we would soften up the defense. Um, and that was typically our game plan. And in that game in particular, I just remember, um, Kalen went crazy running draw traps up the middle all day. Um, I think, uh, their nose guard was probably, um, pretty beat up by the second quarter yeah, yeah. <laughs> from getting uh, blindsided. Uh, I just remember giving the, uh, calling that, that, that draw trap up the middle um, and Kalen getting nine, 10, 15 yards every single time. Former BYU quarterback, Ryan Hancock with us on BYU sports nation, Ryan, to set up some context for the 1992 season, for those who don't know, you were the third string quarterback going in behind John Walsh and Steve Clements, this right after Ty Detmer. In your wildest, did you ever imagine that you would be starting the Halloween game against Penn State? <laughs> um, you know what? Uh, that season, I pretty much took one practice at a time. Uh, obviously, at the start of the season, um, it was tough and frustrating to not be the starter, but pretty much at that point, I just put my head down and stayed, stayed to work. Um, and it just is interesting the way the chips fell, um, things worked out and, um, it's, it's a difficult situation to be in, but, um, you know, you never know how things are going to work out and, um, they worked out for my benefit. And, um, and, uh, I think things, uh, you know, went, went well and, I was excited to uh, have that opportunity, of course. Um, you know, that whole season I just took um, one game at a time because it was just so crazy. Um, I think one of the reasons I was able to be successful is 
Um, I really didn't have um, the opportunity to feel all that pressure because things happened so fast that season. All of a sudden, I'm one week I'm um, I'm a third string, then I'm second string um, uh, halfway through um, the Hawaii game, then and then you know Steve Clements went down, and I was in there before I even had a chance to think about it. Baylor, so, uh, yeah. Baylor Go Romney ahead. actually pulled a Ryan Hancock. He's a <laughs> third string who beats number 14 at home mm-hmm. on national TV. So that's interesting. We want to talk about the starting quarterback, Zach Wilson. What a season he's having. What have you thought yeah. about his performance and his elevation into the Heisman conversation? Um, well, it doesn't surprise me at all. Um, that kid has a dedication level um, that is pretty much unmatched. He's got some great um, – role models he's been able to be exposed to um he's put himself in a great situation because of that um anytime you you know try to emulate players um that um that you know you're you're around like he was um able to do this summer um uh you know it's it's going to be um you know the results are going to be fantastic and and i really feel like um his success is just reflection on the work that he's put in um and so it, it doesn't surprise me at all I, and and i was aware last season that that he struggled through um some slight injuries um enough to you know play through but you know not be at 100 percent. and that's a tough situation to be in because you have to take all that criticism and you want to blame that but um you also um you know don't want to be that guy uh, blaming, you know, things like injuries. So um, it's a tough situation, but it's great to see, to see um, you know, him be rewarded at this point. Brian Hancock on BYU Sports Nation. Here BYU sits, number 10 in the country in the coaches poll, number 11 in the AP poll. We are discussing the Cougars as a dark horse potential in the college football <laughs> playoff. And it seems that if BYU goes undefeated, most national analysts think they're a lock for the New Year's Six. Ryan, where do you sit on all of this, handling the national hype? Are you buying in to the New Year's Six well, and gulp the college football playoff? <laughs> you know what? Um, it, it's 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 a lot of fun to to see this happening. I, I think that the maturity of this team is is showing right now because you know it's very possible they could have already have had one of those slip up situations because they had their eye on the wrong thing but because the way this season has gone down with the craziness um they've had to focus um on on just doing things one day at a time and um they haven't focused on you know the, everything going on around them um you know it, me watching this stuff happening with the media, uh, it's just interesting because I feel like um, it's it's happening and it's not um, – how do I want to put it? Uh, you know, it, it just seems like, you know, they're blowing up, uh, you know, everything that, um, you know, is going on with the Cougars and, and they love what they see and – and um, you know the coaches are saying all the right thing, and they're and they're they're not um, you know buying into it. And and I think that that's you know the key here that they're just focusing on on their day to day preparations, and you know just not not falling into that trap that can happen. Yeah, luckily there's no daily TV and radio shows. I've talked about it every day, which is good <laughs> news for yeah. all of us. Yes. I mean, if there was, that'd be crazy. Okay, let's finish yeah. for this. Is BYU ever going to have a quarterback like you? You played in the majors as a pitcher, and you quarterbacked BYU. I mean, what you did is wild. Will we ever see that again with somebody? Um, well, I've always been a fan of the multi-sport athlete, um, and there's a lot of people out there that that uh, that think that it develops you, um, you know, a very well makes you a very well-rounded athlete because you're put in so many different situations. Um, different leadership situations, different types of, you know, preparation um, that you have to go through. Um, And, well, we have Jaron Hall. Look at, look at him. Jaron could, could be in that situation. You never know. Um, I I think um, baseball is, um, it develops a whole different side of, 
um, of, of an athlete that football does. Um, so, you know, it, it worked well for me and I definitely think it could work well for someone in the future, especially, um, uh, a, a baseball player. Jaron Hall, dual sport lifestyle that you lived, uh, we wonder when and if we're going to see him again. But in the meantime, Ryan, great to talk with you. And I don't know what you're doing tonight, but maybe you're watching reruns of that 1992 <laughs> Penn State-BYU game. <laughs> yeah, it, um, it, it's it's just um, funny. It's some of the things that are going on with the, with the Cougars right now. And I will, will say that uh, um, uh, any of the Cougar fans out there that are worried about um, about the Cougars being soft because they're bachelor – or bachelorette fans, um, they shouldn't worry about it because I've been watching it since they've been in diapers. So, <laughs> <laughs> so uh, uh, and I don't think I'm soft. So I, I think the Cougars are going to be fine. Ryan Hancock, will you accept this blue rose from BYU Hell Sports yeah. Nation? <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, man. Great to talk with you. Thank you. Thanks, guys. Ryan Hancock on the Deseret First Credit Union Hotline. Deseret First, you know why we show how. I had a.